Thanks for tuning in early to worship today. I'm glad you're here. I'm Christopher Keywell, Communications Coordinator at Bethlehem, and your host in the comments section of Facebook at the 8.30 and 10.30 premieres. We will continue to premiere these worship videos on Sunday mornings through August 1st. And then starting August 6th, one worship video will be posted at 5 p.m. on Saturday evenings. The Church Council is committed to continuing our online ministry indefinitely as a way to connect with those who are unable to join our worshiping community on site. It's your generous support of Bethlehem that provides the technical resources and staff time needed to produce these videos each week. There are many ways you can offer financial support without an offering plate. You can mail in a check to 4310 County Road 137, St. Cloud, Minnesota 56301. You can use the text to give feature by texting a dollar amount to 320-289-4093 and following the prompts. For consistent support, even when you're unable to join us for worship, set up a recurring donation at BethlehemLutheran.org slash egiving. Today we're celebrating Pentecost when we remember the Holy Spirit descending upon the followers of Jesus, enabling them to speak in foreign languages the crowd would understand. Today the story of Pentecost is read in English, Slovak, Mandarin, and Spanish. An extra special thank you to Laura Mosner, Ashley Metz, Landon and Olivia Martin Chafee, and Nicole Wolgamott for sharing the reading again. Now here's some ways you can grow in your faith and share God's love with our neighbors. At their May 18th meeting, the executive team approved the Safer Gathering Team's recommendations for protocol updates in light of new CDC and MDH guidance. Those who are fully vaccinated, 14 days past their final dose, are welcome to attend worship and other events indoors without a mask. We do ask that all who are gathered at Bethlehem extend grace and compassion to those in masks and those without, as we remain committed to accepting each other just as we are for who we are. Starting June 6, Bethlehem will open the entire sanctuary for seating, the congregation will be invited to sing along to hymns and songs, and the offering will be received within the service. It will feel very familiar, but again, we remind you of our commitment to extend love, grace, mercy, and compassion of God to all who gather, just as they are. Within today's service, we'll thank Pastor Peter Strumman for his 19 months with Bethlehem, leading us through the lead pastor transition and the calling of our new pastor for worship and engagement. We're so grateful for his insightful teaching and thoughtful leadership and wish him well on what will be his third retirement. While we'll miss Pastor Peter, at the same time, we're excited to welcome Pastor Stephanie Christoffels as our pastor for worship and engagement as she begins her ministry at Bethlehem on June 1st. You're invited to join in our installation service on Sunday, June 27th, either on site or online. The Congregational Life Board is planning a reception following each on site service. One thing you can do right now to make sure we offer the very best welcome to Bethlehem is to dig out your BLC name tag and then be sure to wear it anytime you're here for worship or any other event. Can't find yours? Order a new one at the table in Bethlehem Square. Another good book will gather in Peace Hall on Tuesday, May 25th at 3 p.m. to discuss Pilgrim at Tinker Creek by Annie Dillard. In this Pulitzer Prize winning book, Dillard sets out to explore the natural world close to her home in Virginia's Roanoke Valley. There will be a Zoom session for those who are unable to attend on site. The Church Council has set the date for the semi-annual congregational meeting. The congregation will gather to elect leaders, hear updates on ministries and finances, and conduct other business as needed in the sanctuary on Sunday, June 6th at 9.30 a.m. Because I will be at Gustavus Adolphus College preparing for the first session of the virtual Synod Assembly, Bethlehem won't be able to offer the technically challenging but more interactive Zoom session. Instead, we will live stream the meeting so that members who are unable to attend can still hear the important ministry updates. This summer, families are invited to come together and participate in Bounce Back to Church events after worship on June 6th, July 18th, and August 15th. There will be summer treats, outside games, bounce houses, and more, all designed to build community and help families re-engage with their church friends and family. Friends are welcome, so share an invitation to Bounce Back to Church. The Shooting Star is a weekly email newsletter offering more ways to help advance God's mission for Bethlehem in our community. If you haven't subscribed yet, find a link at BethlehemLutheran.org communications. That's also the page where you can find more ways to connect with Bethlehem, including links to our social media and a way to sign up for important text message updates. Thanks again for tuning in early today. The worship service will begin momentarily.
to a spirit too. And be it to a spirit too. And be it to a spirit too. Say are no vara. La faz de la tierra. Say are no vara. La faz de la tierra. Hope and compassion. And be it to a spirit to send out your and spirit. And be it to a spirit to send out your spirit to a spirit to say on a Nevada. Send out a new La Faz de la Tierra. When the promised wind of change, friend of the poor, empower your people to make peace and justice, and be a to a spirit to send out just be a to a spirit to. Welcome to worship here at Bethlehem Lutheran Church. We are glad that you are joining us for worship today. And remember this, that no matter where you are right now or when you're joining us, you are welcome here just as you are for who we are because God meets us with grace, compassion, mercy, and love just as we are for who we are. Today we are celebrating Pentecost, the day that the Spirit comes to enliven the church and the disciples of Jesus continue his ministry as Jesus' words become their words and Jesus' actions become their actions. Just as today we continue that tradition as we reach out to our community with the words and actions of Jesus. And now our service begins as we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We join our hearts in a word of prayer. Gracious God, you breathe life into our bones, and your Spirit brings truth to the world. Send us your Spirit, transform us by your love, and give us language to proclaim your dream for this world. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. We are so incredibly grateful for our early childhood center here at Bethlehem. And they have been with us for this entire time of the pandemic, being able to offer a children's time for our in-person and online services is fantastic. And so we welcome our early childhood center friends for Chad's Chat.
back to another Chad Chats. Well, welcome again to another one of Chad's Chats. We are with our early childhood center friends, and guys, you know what to do. Can you say hello? <laughs> Does anybody notice something strange today? Yeah, like your app. The lights are out. Now, the camera may not be able to pick that up because it makes the room brighter, but you're right, the lights are out. That's odd. I wonder why that is. Well, let me check my blue case of mystery. What do you think's in the blue case today? What do you think, a flashlight? Because it's dark in here? A flashlight. A flashlight? It's not a flashlight. I think I heard it over here. What was it? Candle. A candle is in the blue case today. It must have I, known. I have a big candle like that. I have, I think I have two or three or a million. I don't know what I have. I you have two, three, or a million candles like that. Oh, yeah. I think I had that when I was a little kid. That is can awesome. Can so we can see how it works? Can we light it up to see how it works? You know what? The blue case must have known the lights would be off today because our story that the people are going to hear, it's about a flame. And you know what? I want to be able to show you guys that. But we can't do that right here. We have to go on a little journey. You guys want to go on a little journey with me? Yeah! All right. And so guys, we'll talk a little bit more about candles and light in a second, but we need to say goodbye to everybody who's joining us right now online. Can you guys wave and say goodbye? Today's reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21 in the New Testament. Before Jesus ascended into heaven, he told his disciples they would be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, surrounded by signs of fire, wind, and a variety of languages in their midst, the people were amazed and astonished at Jesus' promise coming true. The reading begins at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly, from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Jadola 
su cita de Juan. Cuando llegó el día de Pentecostés, estaban todos juntos en el mismo lugar. De repente, vino del cielo un ruido como el de una violenta ráfaga de viento, y llenó toda la casa donde estaban reunidos. Se les aparecieron entonces unas lenguas como de fuego, que se repartieron y se posaron sobre cada uno de ellos. Todos fueron llenos del Espíritu Santo, y comenzaron a hablar en diferentes lenguas, según el Espíritu les concedía expresarse. Estaban de All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I've learned a new word since my time here at Bethlehem. The word is liminal. It's a fancy word for being all in between and not really sure what's coming next. Liminal describes what we've been experiencing for over a year now with COVID. We remember life before COVID, which we call normal. And now we are in the middle of COVID time and have adapted to uh, wearing masks, social distancing, getting vaccinated, coping with different work world, a different school world. And now when we think about what's going to come later, we're not even quite sure what that new normal is going to be like. So we're in liminal space. We're in between times, and we're not positive where it's all going to lead. But as I reflect on my time here at Bethlehem, I know that liminal space did not begin with COVID. I arrived here on October 23rd, 2019, and you were already in liminal space as a congregation. Pastor D and Pastor Janine had recently left after serving 32 years 
and 14 years respectively. And suddenly, pastoral leadership at Bethlehem Lutheran Congregation was in a state of in-between. So you arrange to, to get a liminal pastor. Uh, that's me. Uh, we call it interim pastor. But it's to help lead you through the liminal time that connects one era to the next. And originally, of course, that was to be around 10 months. It's turned out to be 19. And COVID's not over yet, but Bethlehem's new era of pastor, pastoral leadership is, is ready to begin. And so we're saying farewell to the interim pastor. And in a couple of weeks, hello to the newly called pastor, Pastor Stephanie. And I'm heading to a new liminal space. It's called retirement. As I was looking at the three passages that are traditionally appointed for uh, for uh, Pentecost, one of which you've heard read uh, so creatively with the different languages, it's the account in Acts. But there's another one, which is uh, the words of Jesus the night before he died, where he's promising the Holy Spirit to come to the uh, disciples. And then another one from the Apostle Paul, who's talking about how the Spirit will intercede for us, those are three that speak of the work of the Holy Spirit. At any rate, when I was looking at them, it occurred to me that all three of these passages where God is active or promising take place in liminal times. Liminal space. So if we keep in, this in mind, Maybe we can better appreciate what they say today. In John's Gospel, Jesus promises that the Holy Spirit will soon be given. He calls it the Advocate, one that will guide the apostles, the disciples. And they're, they're, they're having their last meal before his death. It's the last meal when he is fully physically present with them. And we sense that they're tense, they're disheartened, they're afraid of the future when Jesus says he'll be leaving and he will no longer be with them. He is going to the Father. And they naturally fear what lies ahead. In Acts, we read of a wild and crazy event that just blew through the disciples when they were wondering what lay in store of them now that Jesus had departed into heaven after his resurrection. This is about 50 days later. They're not sure what to do. And then in Paul's letter to the Romans, Paul describes the gift of the Holy Spirit to us in those times that are so disorienting and confusing, we're not even sure what to pray. Maybe the best we can do is a sigh. And the Spirit prays in and through us as a gift. Liminal times. So taken together, all of these texts are great news for any time, but maybe they're especially encouraging for liminal times because sometimes God does God's greatest work or plants the seeds precisely in those times when we're quite, not quite sure what the future's going to be like. So I'd like to briefly... Uh, speak of all three of these passages, and I'd like to begin with the first one, which really is uh, Jesus' words to his disciples on the night in which he uh, was betrayed, the night before he died. And I would call this how love and truth can be for everyone in all places. During the last meal, Jesus makes a promise that might not seem like good news, 
to those who are with him in the flesh, but actually it's wonderful news for all of us in the future. And actually it was quite necessary for the disciples as they entered a new normal. Let me read his words. I tell you the truth, says Jesus. It is to your advantage that I go away. For I do not go away. If I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. In other words, Jesus is saying, the Holy Spirit is now going to be sent. And as we've reflected on that, it is the Holy Spirit that brings us the spirit of Jesus. And Jesus is no longer limited to a certain locale, but he is able to be with us at all times and in all places. And it's in this sense that we can abide in Jesus, that we can come to faith, that we can say Christ is in us or we are in Christ. And this is more than just mentally using your imagination to think about Jesus on your own steam, so to speak. No, it's the very presence of God that is given to us by the Spirit. Sometimes that maybe seems distant, but there are times when it can be very, very present and always with us. And a year ago at Easter, I remember sharing with you how I realized this when I was standing in the tomb of somebody that had been, um, had built the tomb right, at the, right around the time of Jesus, very near where Jesus' tomb actually it was. In fact, some people think this was the tomb. And I remember I was fascinated, but I was struck by the fact that just being there close to where Jesus had actually been didn't make him seem any closer to me. And I remembered, well, when were the times that I really felt the presence of Jesus? And I realized, well, I was in Shunga, Russia, Aberdeen, South Dakota, Namibia, South Africa, home in Oldham, South Dakota, or Duluth, times here in St. Cloud. The Holy Spirit is the one that brings us Jesus. And this is exactly the promise that Jesus gives to the disciples when they're in this very uncomfortable in-between place, between having to say goodbye to him as they had known him and to be able to meet what was coming. The second reading, of course, you heard today, and that's the strange signs that point to God's future. Now, consider this powerful, unexpected happening that we read about in Acts. It's a liminal time again because this small band of disciples have said goodbye to Jesus in a sense. There are no more appearances. He has departed. They're kind of waiting for what comes next, and they don't know what to do. They're, they can't envision the church as we now know it, spanning the globe, going to visit Gentiles and bringing them in. They have no idea of what's coming. And suddenly, uh, it's like they're introduced to a power unlike anything that they've ever experienced before. And what happens that day is not just a bunch of strange signs that don't mean anything. Actually, they're clues and signs about what is to come, and it more happens to them than something they observe. Just consider the story. There's a great sound of rushing wind, like rushing wind. It's not actually wind, but it sounds like it. It's a roar. And it's no accident that the Hebrew word for spirit is the same word for wind and for the breath of life. And here in this sound of rushing wind, 
is the Spirit of God here to give life of faith power also you have these strange sense of flames coming on top of each of the apostles and that is another sign of the spirit as we see so often here in the candle it's that sense of the living presence but it's fire it gives light it gives energy it purifies um, it's often a symbol of truth and of wisdom and then they find themselves speaking in languages they don't know and are understood by people that know those languages. What is going on here? But it's a sign. It's a signal. Because if you remember back to the Old Testament story of a long time ago, it's, it's an ancient story about the Tower of Babel in which the power of sin divides people and it's symbolized in the fact that they can no longer understand each other and so they split and go their different ways and this is always what the power of sin does in community it fragments divides we have wars we have animosity we have enmity what is happening here is we can understand each other around the same message in a miraculous way, it's a sign of what will be. And you know that to this day, people are translating the message of God's word into every language the nation has known, this world has even known. That when we come to understand and are filled with the Spirit, it, it brings us together as a community. This is what would be the lives of the disciples as they went to all nations with the gospel and then Peter God bless Peter so anxious to be a leader so often failing he suddenly comes into his own he interprets what's going on for the curious crowd and he preaches such an inspiring sermon that 2,000 people come to new faith and in many ways we say this is the birthday of the church right under their noses this power has come in and the Christian movement happens. Just as Jesus and the prophets foresaw. They didn't see this coming. They were, however, however open to it coming. In their liminal space. One last thing. The third, Paul talks about how the Holy Spirit gives us a special gift during liminal times when we're not sure we know all the answers. We got more questions than answers. And maybe we're more open to God in this time. Because have you ever noticed that it is sometimes in the liminal times when we don't know all the answers? And we're asking the questions that some of the best ideas and things that we learn take root. At any rate, I close now with an observation that Paul makes about God's work during these times of stress and confusion and not knowing. And these are things that we individually uh, have experienced. I know this is a favorite verse for you, for many of you. Let me read it. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, Paul writes. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what's in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Have you ever been in those times where you, you knew you needed God, but you weren't quite even sure how to put it into words and about the best you could do was a sigh? 
This promise says that the Spirit intercedes and through the Spirit is prayed that which is needed. And uh, it's a special gift of God for those times when we just really don't know how to even put in things in words. But God does. We are betwixt and between. We're in liminal time. We may be disoriented, but God is not. And our size before God in uncertain times may actually be our most adequate prayers through the Spirit. Well, I finish because this is encouraging news for any church at any time, but I think it's especially true when a church is finding itself in that, that space where you're looking forward to the new era. Um, Bethlehem understands that we are living in the 21st century in which uh, we're, our society has become very secular. And uh, there are, there's a need for fresh thinking and for receiving the Spirit of God for guidance. All of these things are terribly important, and this is part of the promise of the Holy Spirit. We are not alone, and God will work in and through us. I have cherished this time with uh, Bethlehem being your liminal pastor. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing what comes through the ministry now as Bethlehem moves forward in a new era of pastoral leadership for the future. Amen.
So we are incredibly grateful that we get to say thank you to Pastor Peter for his many months, and by many I mean 19 months of interim work with us here. It seems more than just a short-term interim, (laughs) but but it's been so good. Bethlehem has been through a major transition, and we've done that fairly successfully, and to add to it a pandemic. And so your leadership and guidance has just been phenomenal during this time, and we have been so blessed to have you here. We want to wish you the very best, send you off, bless you, and wish you a happy third retirement. Thank you. (laughs) And so I'll begin this time with two readings. Hear these words. First, from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And a reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We join our hearts together in a word of prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for the gift and ministry of Pastor Peter and for the time that we have shared with him. As he has been a blessing to us, so now we send him forth to be a blessing to others. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. So, Peter, as a token of appreciation and recognition of your 19 months here, we have something to present to you on behalf of the congregation. We have a picture of Bethlehem Mm. that you can place in your office, on your wall, wherever you like to keep it in remembrance of your time here with us in this community. So again, thank you so much for all that you have done. And I would just invite you to say a few words to the congregation. Thank you. Well, I love this picture. Uh, it's, it's one that hangs in our church, and that will, be, that will be fun to put up on the wall. I look back on this time, as unusual as it was, actually with a great deal of gratitude. Uh, I cherish it. it. It has been a good chapter in my life, and to have been able to have been helpful to a congregation at this time, especially with some of the unusual challenges, um, I feel really good about that. And so uh, Bethlehem will always have a real soft spot in my heart. I know that you really become part of my Uh, that list of congregations that I have now (laughs) served, whether interim or more permanent. And uh, I have enjoyed, I feel very, very deeply about uh, Bethlehem as a congregation that does a lot of fine ministry. It has some wonderful people. And um, I think uh, is being, is poised now to walk into a new uh, liminal space. (laughs) And, uh, uh, as I walk into a new liminal space of retirement. <laughs> so, Well, thank you again. And so now, no matter where you are or when you are joining us for worship, I would just invite you to give uh, Pastor Peter a show of appreciation with a round of applause. So thank you very much, Peter. Thank you. Thank you for the many ways in which you give of your time, your talents, your passions, and your finances for the sake of the ministry that we share in this place. People do not give of their time or their finances easily, but they do for a mission, a vision, a story, a purpose. Here at Bethlehem, we are committed to being followers of Jesus and addressing the great needs of our lives, our community, and our world through acts of service and grace. We believe it's incredibly important to be transparent here at Bethlehem, especially around our finances. And as such, we have been giving monthly financial updates. So year to date, when we look at our total budgeted income, the money that we expect to receive 
to be able to do the ministry that we are called to do, we are $14,000 short from meeting that budgeted income. However, I can say that our expenses have been significantly lower than anticipated, which means that we enter the summer months with $32,000 in excess of our expenses. We are incredibly grateful for this gift. We really are. And we encourage the congregation to continue to give generously as we go into the summer months, which are typically a little bit lower for us when it comes to finances. We are, again, grateful for all the ways that you give. At this time, we receive our tithes and offerings and hear an offering of music. Our service continues as we join our hearts in prayer, as we pray for the church, for the world, and for all people who have needs. Merciful God, guide your church as it debates and discerns your will. Help it to speak to a world in need in ways that resonate with and transform individuals so that all people may come to know of your love. Reform those parts of your church that are in error. Strengthen those parts that are weak and help those parts that struggle. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, sustain this world and all life which you have created. Where the, wherever there are those who suffer from famine, drought, flood, oppression, injustice, or intolerance, may your presence be known to them. Grant that we, your servants, will not turn a blind eye to those in need, but help them as followers of Christ. In particular, today we lift up to you all those who are suffering now in the Israel, Israel and Palestine conflict. Gracious God, send peace to this land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, grant healing to those with ailments in body, mind, and spirit. Hear their cries and come to their aid. Today we especially pray for Jolene Perkins, Ralph Cyrils, Monica Anderson, Kristen Markfort, Anya Bohm, Lillian Johannes, Don Tucker, Lou Johnson, Elroy Frank. Gracious God, also be with those that we name in the silence of our hearts, our family and our friends. Grant these individuals named and unnamed healing, even if they cannot be cured. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Merciful God, be with all those who are away from their families and loved ones. Be with all those in this congregation who are in the midst of life transitions, new experiences, and dangers of any kind. Guide them on their paths. Gracious God, especially today, we pray for Pastor Peter and his family. As he enters retirement yet again, we pray that you will bless him and give him peace and strength to continue to live the call that you've given him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All this and whatever else you see that we need, we pray to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, 
Jesus, who is the Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Malo, malo, thanks be to God. Malo, malo, thanks be to God. Obrigado, alleluia. Obrigado, alleluia. Gracias, cansa, amida. In the Pentecost story, a fiery tongue comes over the disciples and they are able to communicate with people in ways never before. So too now as we leave this place, we go out into the world to communicate the love, peace, and grace of Christ in a variety of different ways. And as we leave this place, take God's blessing with you. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.